As long as humans have been around, we've done horrible things to each other in the name of religion, racism, stupidity, and more. In our other videos on this channel, we've looked at other torture methods like the cat and nine tails, flogging, and imprisonment. But what if the crime warranted a worse punishment than any of those? One of the worst atrocities man has inflicted on his fellow man must be slavery. Being deprived of your liberty, self-respect, even your identity at times, forced to work endlessly in desperate conditions for zero pay, and always facing the possibility of death or brutal punishments for even the slightest infraction. In this video, we take a look at slavery the pirate way, how and why pirates enslaved others, what a slave could expect, and how common it was to use slavery as a torture method. Welcome to Walk the Plank. Setting the Boardwalk Along with the so-called discovery of the Americas came European colonization and slavery. With an apparently limitless abundance of crops and other produce, the issue for the Europeans lay not in growing commodities, rather in finding the manpower to grow, harvest, and transport the goods back to their home countries. Indigenous people were vulnerable to European diseases, and plantation owners worked them to death before looking elsewhere for sources of cheap labour. While they already had indentured servants in their households back home, the servants were unable to adapt to the Caribbean climate. A solution presented itself in the form of slaves that had been captured and sold by African traders on the west coast. These slaves had already adapted to the rigours of the Caribbean climate, had developed immunity to some of the European diseases, and weren't Christians. Even though we often view African slaves as the epitome of enslaved peoples, pirates were not picky and would capture people of any race or religion, meaning that some white Europeans ended up in a pirate slave market too. As the slave trade grew, so did the ties to piracy. Crew members and slaves alike were looking to get away from slave ships, and the inadvertent equality aboard pirate ships seemed like an attractive prospect. At least better than the disease, discipline, and bad diet found on board the ships carrying slaves to the New World. This led to an increase in the number of pirates on the seas, which coincidentally was their downfall. As the number of pirates increased, so the profits of the slavers took a beating until the Crown stepped in and dealt with the piracy problem. By the beginning of the 18th century, piracy was causing too much interference with the slave trade. This came after decades of legitimate piracy in the Atlantic and the Caribbean, as pirates had been sanctioned to attack merchant ships and return the goods to the country that had hired them as mercenaries. Once the colonies were well established, European powers wanted to move away from using pirates to interfere with other countries' slave trade. But by that point, pirates were already accustomed to attacking the vulnerable slave ships and didn't want to give it up. Barbary Slave Trade While many slaves were captured to become a cheap source of labour, there are other causes for enslaving another person, religious and racial slavery being two such drivers. A group of privateers known as the Barbary Pirates were well known for performing religious slavery, capturing hundreds of thousands of Europeans between the 16th and 19th centuries, and selling them into slavery. Originating in North Africa, the Barbary pirates hailed from Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and the Ottoman Empire. They would attack ships and coastal towns along Britain, Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, and the Netherlands to capture slaves that would then be transported back to Barbary slave markets. The raids by the Barbary pirates were so devastating that some places were completely abandoned for many years after the raid, as men, women, and children were seized to become slaves. In the early 1600s, England lost over 450 ships to the Barbary pirates, and nobody knows how many more. The slaves were treated abysmally by the Barbary pirates, being kept overnight in prisons known as bagnios. This term apparently came from the Turks' use of the Roman baths at Constantinople as prisons. Despite this romantic association to the Roman baths, the bagnios were horrific places to stay. The bagnios were overcrowded and hot, although some slaves made the best of their situation, and ran chapels, hospitals, and even bars from the bagnios. 
As difficult as life was in the Bagnio, it was nothing in comparison to what galley slaves endured. If you were unlucky enough to be assigned to the galley in a ship, you could expect 80 to 100 days a year at sea, shackled to an oar along with five other people. You wouldn't be able to leave your place on the oar for any reason, not to eat, sleep, or go to the toilet. You would be watched over constantly by an overseer who would whip you if he thought you weren't working hard enough. Although most galley slaves were at sea for about one third of the year, that didn't mean that their time on land would be a holiday. A galley slave who was not on board the ship would be forced to do manual labor when on land. Some unfortunate souls were even more unlucky, and it has been reported that some galley slaves in Constantinople were kept on board permanently and would be kept below deck for years. Pirates becoming slaves. Slavery was not only used as a punishment on pirate ships, but was also used as a deterrent for pirates themselves, particularly for black people. Runaway slaves found that becoming a pirate was a surefire way to escape their enslavement, if only for a short time. Running with a pirate crew gave black people their freedom, but was a complicated matter. If a black pirate was caught by the authorities, they faced a different fate to their white counterparts. The authorities would do their best to save them from the hangman's noose, as they were more valuable as slaves than as dead men. Escaped slaves would be returned to their masters, whilst free men would be sold into slavery. White men also faced the spectre of slavery if they were captured, although this was often only if the authorities needed to make an example, thus sentencing them to a period of enslavement. Normally, this would only be a sentence for a certain number of years, but it frequently turned into a lifetime of slavery, as these criminals were treated abhorrently. Selling the pirates as slaves actually benefited the government financially, and provided cheap disposable labor to companies like the East India Company or the Royal Africa Company. These enslaved pirates would sometimes be used on board ships, but more often than not, they ended up working on plantations or in the mines. Depending on the company that bought them, they could be sent to the gold mines or the opium plantations, both of which meant backbreaking, dangerous work, and terrible living conditions. Although the sentence was normally only 7 or 11 years, an enslaved pirate was at the whims of their owner, and could find their sentence being extended on the flimsiest of excuses. Falling sick, being seen as lazy or rude, needing extra shoes or clothes, could all count as grounds for extending your sentence, as you'd need to serve extra time to cover the extra expense. It also turns out that some owners preferred Catholic slaves, believing that they were less likely to commit suicide, as they feared for their immortal souls. Many slaves ended up in the colonies, facing a slow death marked by backbreaking labor, brutal punishments, and rations that could barely sustain a child, let alone a full-grown man. Many enslaved pirates in the colonies were considered lesser than the African slaves, as they couldn't cope in the heat. Black Bart Roberts Although pirates often attacked slave ships in the Middle Passage, they weren't usually interested in being cruel to the slaves themselves. The majority of the time, the pirates would attack the vessel, free the slaves, and accept as many of the slaves and crew into their ranks as wanted to join. If they could make use of slaves aboard their ships, they would keep a few slaves to do heavy menial labor. However, the pirates who attacked slave vessels were mostly interested in the ship itself and the treasure it carried. Although, one pirate stands out for his cruelty. Black Bart Roberts was a Welsh pirate active in the late 17th century, plundering more than 400 ships throughout his three-year career. Captain of a powerful ship equipped with 40 cannons, Roberts had a cruel streak that led him to capture many slave ships, with the intention of extorting gold from the captains to get their gold back. In 1722, Roberts sailed into Weedar Harbour and captured the 11 ships that were sheltering there. Ten of the ship's captains paid the ransom, but one captain refused to part with his money, which Roberts didn't take well. He covered the ship in tar and set fire to it, burning the vessel to a smouldering wreck. Nearly 100 slaves were trapped in the ship's hold, and either perished in the inferno or drowned by jumping overboard. How Pirates Treated Slaves 
So clearly pirates had a complicated relationship with slavery. Previous slaves could become pirates who would then be happy to attack slave ships and enslave others in terrible conditions. Enslaved men could face hard labour and terrible punishments, while women would often be subject to sexual violence. Although it doesn't seem as though most pirate ships kept sex slaves. In certain European countries, noble families viewed it as a status symbol to keep black children as a sort of footman or attendant. And pirates were not immune to such fancies. It seems as though some pirate captains also kidnapped black or mixed race children to keep on board as their private attendants. Many pirates actually became slave owners after retiring from a life of crime, including Blackbeard's quartermaster William Howard, who was seen accompanied by two slaves, while Henry Morgan and Bartholomew Sharp both owned slaves and had land in Jamaica. Outro Slavery is an old trade, and pirates were deeply linked to it. Some pirates came from slavery, others enslaved people on behalf of countries who were paying them to do so, and some pirates ended up as slaves themselves. While life on the seas was hard, life as a pirate slave could only have been worse. Being kept in cramped, dangerous conditions and being forced to work where you slept, ate, and defecated must have driven many slaves to the brink of insanity. Below decks was a dark, humid place. Disease ran rife among those shackled in the bowels of the ship, while overseers constantly monitored the slaves to make sure that they were working hard enough to satisfy the needs of their owners. Slaves were not a homogenous group. Anyone could fall prey to a pirate ship, especially the fearsome Barbary pirates, and be transported to a harsh world where your worth was measured in the strength of your back and you were viewed as a commodity to be expended at any time. No wonder that many slaves chose to walk the plank instead of facing the years of abuse, neglect, and starvation that being enslaved would entail. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos, and I'll see you next week for another one.